This is the Obedient Church of God, broadcasting from the world tomorrow.org throughout the world on the I internet. Can tell by your eyes that you probably been crying for him. Yes, Father has been crying for six thousand years because you're so disobedient and for your ministers. in the sky don't mean nothing to you. Genesis 114, light so mark days, not phony international dateline. in the whole world that doesn't move God's Sabbath day to Friday with a phony international dateline. God's word of Genesis 1.14 means nothing to you. It's a mirror. When will you repent, you masters? When will you start following the Bible? you listen to God's way of life. For 6,000 years he's been trying to work with people. All of Israel, the whole nation, didn't enter the promised land because they refused to walk in God's ways. Today, in the year 2014, the ministers refuse and continue to neglect and refuse to walk in God's ways. The Bible clearly says man shall live by every word of God. 
That's my Matthew 4, 4. But your ministers refuse to. Your ministers refuse Matthew 4, 4. They say, no, we will not live by every word of God. We will not live by Deuteronomy 16, 16 of the Torah, of God's law, that three times a year you're supposed to have a feast site. Three times. Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. But they refuse to. They don't live by every word of God. Now Isaiah 8.20 says, if they don't speak according to Deuteronomy 16.16, 16, there's no light in them. There's no light in them. And indeed, Ezekiel 46.3, you shall worship dot, dot, dot on the new month day. Your ministers say, we shall not. Zechariah 8, verse 19 says, four times you shall have fast to the Lord. Your ministers say, no, we'll only have it once. Who are you going to believe? God's Bible, God speaking, and in Isaiah 19, it's 8, 19, it said, the Lord stated. Who said that? God. God said it. But your ministers, they won't follow it. They refuse to. And they continue to neglect and refuse to. And you're going to go straight into the lake of fire with them. That's right, because you refuse to. So why don't you read your Bible? And read Zechariah 8, 19. The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, the fast of the tenth. But your ministers say, no, we won't have the fast of the fourth or the fast of the fifth. Oh, we'll have the fast of the seventh. Okay, we'll have atonement. But we won't have the fast of the tenth. Now, who told you to have these fasts? I didn't tell you. Verse 19. Thus says the Lord of hosts. The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, the fast of the tenth, shall be dot, dot, dot feasts. Your ministers say, no, they won't. Who are you going to listen to? God? Where it clearly says, in verse 18, the word of the Lord of hosts came, thus says the Lord. And then you have, thus says your minister. Which one are you going to follow? The Lord or your minister? See, we are the Romans end time work. Whether your lying minister says so or not doesn't make any difference. We are, as proven by the facts. Go to our internet site, theworldtomorrow.org. Click on the first set of links that show you that we have restored God's Sabbath day throughout the world because our Pakistani congregation, Church of God Pakistan, waits until tomorrow for the sun to go down, then they have the Sabbath day. But no, none of the other churches do. They have it on Friday with the phony 1883 International Dateline. That's a fact. Your minister moves God's Sabbath day to Friday, just like the poop moves God's Sabbath day to Sunday. That's a fact. And you are going to go straight into hell for practicing a lie and supporting your minister who moves God's Sabbath day to Friday. And that includes the Living Church of God, the Philadelphia Church of God, the United Church of God, Triumph Prophetic Ministries, who is in real trouble because they know clearly about it and they refuse, Triumph refuses and says, we're going to wait for Christ to come back. So Triumph says, we're going to wait to repent when Christ comes back. 
Well, that's too late. That's too late. Because he comes back at the last trump. And if you're going to try to repent at the last trump, it's too late. You're going to continue practicing a lie, Triumph Pro? Eh? Well, Revelation has got the answer for you. Sure. Why don't you read it? Revelation 21, the end of the book. It's what happens to you if you continue to practice a lie and, and then even make it worse by saying you're not going to repent till Christ comes back. So let's read it. Go to the back of the book. Find out what's going to happen to you. Outside are, you know, outside, like outside the kingdom. Okay? Outside are, in verse 15 of Revelation 22, are whoever practices a lie. And your minister is practicing a lie, and you are practicing a lie. And you didn't have New Month Day. You refused to have New Month Day. And today is Kislev the 19th, no matter what any minister says, because we cited it through our contacts in Jerusalem regarding the new crescent moon, and it defaulted to the 30th day, and that's it. And don't even listen to this malarkey about minister, ministers that say have 31 days, 32 days, 33 days. They don't know what they're talking about. It defaults on the 30th day. So what are you yapping about 31 days, 32 days, 33 days? I'll tell you what might happen to you, though. You ministers with potential visibility. You'll have potential visibility for the next month, for the next new moon, you're saying, because January's sighting is... Uh, borderline, oh yeah, you're going to end up with 31 days in the month. Then what are you going to do, eh? What are you going to do when you have potential visibility and end up at, with 31 days in the month? Because the days can't be longer than 30. Yes, they can be shorter, because they were shorter before. They were shorter before. Remember Joshua? You know, when one day during the battle, it stayed light. Well, we'll tell you about that even. Explain Joshua 7 to you. Give you a hint. It, it has something to do with uh, planet X7. Yes. We've known this all along. But we'll tell you about it. Give you another hint. Planet X7 passes through the area between the Earth and the Sun, and that knocks off all the gravitational pulls on the Earth, and the day is extended. The day is extended. The daylight portion of the day is extended, and that's what happened with Joshua. Well, we've got the data on that, and we'll tell you about that. And planet X7 comes around many times. And it's called X7. Ministers don't even know why it's called X7. It's called X7 because it's seven times the diameter of the Earth. That's why it's got the name X7. So we, the Obedient Church of God, are on the cutting edge of research and science and know that of what we speak. And we're telling you to follow God's Bible Every jot and tittle of God's holy word. Every jot. Man shall live by every word of God. That's what Matthew 4, 4 says. You know, if you try to get into the uh, door by another way, you're a robber. You know, you look into... Uh, John chapter 10, hmm? and you look at the first verses, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the door 
into the fold of the sheep but climbs in some other way, climbs in with some other doctrine, he's a thief and a robber. See, doctrine is very important because Father has to test you to see whether he can trust you to follow your manual so that he can put you in a position of rulership. But if you refuse to follow Deuteronomy 16, 16 three times a year, and you refuse to follow Ezekiel 46, 3, you shall worship God on New Month Day, he can't use you because you are a rebel. You are against him. You are against his word. You refuse to follow his word. Anyone who refuses to follow God's word is against God, is an antichrist. You're one of the antichrist, all you ministers. You're all antichrists because you're against Deuteronomy 16.16. 16. You're against Ezekiel 46.3. And indeed, you want to have the way of the Gentile, where Jeremiah 10.2 says, Learn not the way of Germany. Learn not the way of France. Learn not the way of the United States. Learn not the way of the Gentile. Turkey God Day. Don't worship your God the way Germany does, the way France does, the way America does. Do not do that. Your ministers say, no, we're going to put a goose on the table. Not only a turkey, we're going to have a goose because we are so rebellious. Some people are unteachable. They're just plain unteachable. They're going to be going in the lake of fire. And even on earthly things they don't understand. They don't understand. In 2007, I told one minister at a dinner, you know, in the privacy of his own home, that the United States is a polyarchy. polyarchy. That the United States leadership has a secret government that provides two members of their government, their secret government, out for you to choose between the A team and the B team, and it makes no difference at all who you vote for. The same things happen. It's all a big charade. It's a polyarchy, and it's always been a polyarchy. This minister just doesn't understand. Just doesn't. He refuses. Hard-headed and hard-hearted, proven by the facts. He refuses to repent. He's going to have a goose on his table to show off how rebellious he is. When it's Rao Cyrus who sprang forth from the bird that laid the egg, the cosmic goose that laid the egg that Rao Cyrus sprang forth from. But he doesn't recognize that. No. He wants to have his turkey god. Why, out of all the animals, do you have a 20-pound bird on your table? Why, of all the animals, does the president pardon a turkey? Why, all day long, is it on NPR, National Public Radio, Turkey God this, okay? Turkey God that, Thanksgiving Day, Hall, Harvest Home Festival. Look, you have the seven days of the Feast of Ingathering. That's your days of Thanksgiving. You don't add a pagan day. But your minister, he's a devil. Because devils refuse to obey. Oh, the devils believe there's a God, but they don't obey. Your ministers believe there's a God, but they don't obey. They're just like the devils, proven by the facts. Where were they on New Month Day? Why don't they have three feasts a year? Why don't they have the fasts of the Lord? Why do they learn the way of the Gentile? Why do they have Turkey God Day and Mother Goddess Day in the springtime, the Feast of Gaia to their dear sweet mother? and then have Sky Father's Day on the longest day of the year, towards the longest day of the year, to the phony father in the sky, the sky god. Longest day of the year, just like Christmas, the shortest day of the year, leading to it. 
then they have Turkey God Day. You see, they're only half full of oil. And the spiritual virgins who are only half full of oil will be locked out of the marriage supper. Whether they say so or not, they will be locked out because they refused. They refused to obey. So God can't use them. So they're locked out of the marriage supper where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So sad. That's what we're dealing with. See, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. That's why we've got the sword right here. And our banner on the bottom says, Sword of the Word. And if you want to be sanctified by God, John 17, 17, Sanctify them in truth. Your Word is truth. Don't sanctify them in lies. Your ministers are trying to sanctify you in lies. As proven by the facts that they, your ministers, refuse to have God's Sabbath day on the seventh day, which is the test commandment. They have it on the sixth day, because you fly out of LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, towards Australia, and poof, the day changes. It's a miracle. No, it isn't. It's a damn lie from 1883. And if you want to go by 1883 instead of the first century doctrine, burn in hell, you ministers, because that's what's going to happen to you. You know, in the Psalms, Psalm 119, you know, it says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek them with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently, not just the commandments, but the precepts. You know, the grass withers, the flower f fades, but the Word of God stands forever. Deuteronomy 16, 16, three times a year, three feasts a year, three, you shall appear. Stands forever. If you want to be one of God's, there is a condition. The Torah says there's a condition. Deuteronomy 28. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful, careful, careful to do all, all, all his commandments that I command you today. But your ministers aren't careful, and they don't do all of God's commandments. And indeed, they add days. Revelation 22, 18 says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in the work, book. So, the minister adds Turkey God Day. And then they try to make up excuses that Yeshua celebrated Purim. Yeshua, the Bible doesn't say Yeshua celebrated Purim says that Yeshua walked among the column, columns of the temple, the colonnade. That's the same as saying, you know, Yeshua went down to the beach and walked down the columns of the boardwalk. That doesn't mean he went in the water and he went swimming. It means just what it says. He walked in the columns. It doesn't say he went in and sanctified Purim services. It doesn't say that. It says he just walked on the columns, in the columns, outside the temple. Same as you going down to the beach, walking on the boardwalk, walking through the columns of the boardwalk. That doesn't mean that you went in the water, that you went swimming. It means exactly what it says, that you walked down the boardwalk, just like Yeshua walked 
among the columns of the temple. That doesn't mean he went in the temple. Because if Yeshua added a day, that means he broke his father's law that says, do not add to this book, which we just read in Revelation. And that means you don't have salvation. Because that means Yeshua added the day of Purim. And he didn't. He just walked among the colonnades. You've got to realize that you are going to be judged. Revelation 14, 12 speaks of those who keep the commandments of God. That's what you've got to do. Now we've got the deceiver of the whole world and ministers that are deceiving you. And they're going to be thrown into hell. You know, in Revelation 12, verse 9, that's what's going to happen. The great dragon was thrown out down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He's thrown down, and his angels were thrown down with him. It's going to be a terrible time in the next seven years. And the seven years haven't even started yet. The thing is that you've got to present yourself to God as one approved in handling the word of truth. In handling this Bible, every jot and tittle of this Bible, handling it correctly. 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed. Rightly handling the word of truth. You want to be blessed? Do you want to be blessed? This is an easy one. We can have you blessed here. Luke 11.28. Yeshua said, blessed rather are those who hear the word, so we're teaching it to you, we're teaching you to hear the word and keep it, and you will be blessed. But if you continue to listen to your lying ministers, from all of the offshoots, including the United Church of God, the Living Church of God, Philadelphia Church of God, they're all liars. They say they obey God, but they don't obey God's Bible. See, Matthew 25, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise, for when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the why and oil is this Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is given to them who obey. So it has to do with obedience. They took no obedience with them. But the wise took flasks of obedience with their lamps, with flasks of oil. Oil is obedience. You know, Acts 5.32, the Spirit of God is given to them who obey. But the wise took flasks of obedience with their lamps. And as the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. Well, what happened was, is that they ran out of oil, the foolish ones, and they missed the bridegroom. But worse than that, with your ministers, who say, Lord, Lord, you know, and do mighty great works, Matthew 7, 22 to 23 applies to them all. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does. Deuteronomy 16, 16, Ezekiel 46, 3, Zechariah, what is it, 9, 19 or thereabouts. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not teach, prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then... Will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, you workers of Turkey God Day, you workers of refusing to have Ezekiel 46.3. You shall worship on New Month Day. You 
workers of sin that refuse to have God's Sabbath day on the seventh day in half the world. And Yeshua brought more law. You know, Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I came to abolish the law. Do you know how to read? It says, Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law. I have not come to abolish them. I have not come to abolish them. Can you understand his words? I have not come, not, not, not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them, to make them full, to magnify them, to make them bigger. So now there's more law, more law. Yeshua brought more law. Now you cannot even think of committing adultery with your neighbor's wife or you're guilty. Yeshua brought more law, more law. See, you're supposed to be seeking from the book of the Lord. You're supposed to be seeking from this Bible, every jot and tittle. And here's what we have. In Isaiah, Isaiah 34, 16, English Standard Version, Seek and read from the book of the Lord. Not one of these shall be missing. None shall be without her mate. For the mouth of the Lord has commanded, and his spirit has gathered them. Proverbs 35, Every word of God proves two. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. Psalm 119, 160. The sum of your word is truth. You want to know what truth is? Some ministers don't know what truth is. They've even given sermons on what is truth. Here is bare note. When I say bare note, that means you put it in a special file. The sum of your word is truth. That's what truth is. So you want to know what truth is? The sum of the whole Bible is truth. And every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Not for just Old Testament times. Forever. You know, Yeshua said he should live by every word of God. And Yeshua only had the Old Testament. He only had the Septuagint. Yeshua said, live by every word of the Septuagint. Clearly, that's what Yeshua said. Well, you've been tricked by the serpent. And you continue to be tricked by the serpent. And it's unbelievable how stubborn one minister is. He's been told and advised time after time that Billy Graham is a Satanist. Billy Graham is a practicing 33rd degree Mason. Billy Graham vowed to obey Lucifer. In order to be a 33rd degree Mason, you have to vow to obey Lucifer. You also vow to lie. You make a vow that you will lie to deceive the Goyim, to deceive the average man. Billy Graham is a satanic witch. He is an occultist. He believes Lucifer is going to defeat Yeshua. He tells everyone just to believe and you will be saved. He doesn't tell anyone to repent. He just says, believe and you shall be saved. You've got to realize that some ministers are unteachable. They are totally unteachable. You can tell them straight to their face, straight in an email, Billy Graham is a satanic, 33rd, devil-worshipping mason. And yet they'll still praise Billy Graham on the air. It's unbelievable. Well. Figure it out for yourself. 
administration of God and anybody who praises Billy Graham when they know he's a 33rd satanic mason isn't of God they're part of the deception you know you've got the five foolish virgins who only do half things right and they think that they're going to be in the kingdom they're not they're locked out where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, there's a measuring rod like a staff. In Revelations 11, 1 to 19, Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. Measure the people. See, you're going to be measured. You're going to be measured whether you've come up to the mark or not. And in today's broadcast, we'll give you information about the shepherd and how the shepherd used the rod, how the rod was used to, to inspect the sheep and let one sheep through at a time where the sheep was inspected for, you know, wounds and flaws and other sheep problems and the shepherd inspected the sheep one by one and you're going to be inspected that's why you shall not live by bread alone you shall live by every word of God Luke 4 4 and all scripture is profitable for teaching 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. If your minister says ignore words of the Bible, if your minister says ignore Ezekiel 46, 3, you shall worship dot dot on New Month Day, tell him he's a liar. That he's telling you that you shall not worship. Tell him he's a liar. Because all scripture is profitable for teaching. 2 Timothy 3, 16. Proverbs, you know, that one in Proverbs 30, around verse 5, every word of God proves too true. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found to be a liar. That's in Proverbs 30, 5 and 6, verses 5 and 6. Don't add to his words. No liar shall enter the kingdom, lest you be found to be a liar. Well, we've got the truth for you, and we're going to explain further for you in today's sermon. And we always give this in the opening, but we also have tidbits that, and information that you never hear anywhere else. So we'll give you information on Planet X7. We'll give you information on how to survive an EMP electromagnetic pulse attack. We'll tell you about Russia, how the citizens of Russia are now allowed to carry guns, handguns, for self-defense. And as soon as they put in the gun ban in Britain, home invasions went up 60%. 60%. And the places in the United States that have the gun bans, like Chicago, have the highest incidence of robbery. The highest incidence of robbery. The reason they don't want you to have guns is because they want to rule over you and kick down your door and not get shot while they're doing it so that they can make you kowtow and follow the new world order where you will be told to give homage to the beast, where you will be told to worship the beast. And we'll tell you about what's going on in the world, what Putin is saying to the United States. Here's a quote, it should be a bear note too. Regarding the USA, do you know what Putin just said? Putin said, Remember the lessons we taught Hitler. Yeah, remember the lessons we taught Hitler. 
That's what Putin said to the United States. You know, Hitler was demonically inspired and brought down. The United States is demonically inspired and will be brought down. God gave the blessings of Jacob to the United States, Ephraim and Manasseh, but he didn't give the rulers. The Bible clearly states that Satan is the ruler of this world, that Satan is the god of this world. The Bible clearly states that. Your ministers don't seem to realize that. They don't realize that your leaders are satanic. You know, even Chavez, Hugo Chavez, you know, president of Venezuela, he had said to the United Nations the day after Bush was speaking in the United Nations, he said, I can still smell the sulfur from yesterday, from yesterday. I can still smell the sulfur, referring to Bush being on the podium. Well, oh, Bush is a Kabbalist. Bush is a Kabbalist. He practices the Kabbalah. I've got a picture of Bush carrying around a Kabbalah, tucked under his arm. And Chavez recognized that. In a 15-minute address to the annual gathering of international leaders in New York, President Chavez said, I'll give you the uh, quote, he could still, here's the quote, smell sulfur left behind by the devil, George Bush, who had addressed the chamber 24 hours earlier. Well, we'll tell you more about that. Because Chavez attacked the devil Bush. Now, Chavez is dead because Chavez was poisoned with cancer. And indeed, any leaders that go against the United States end up with cancer. You know, we had Christine... Now, Kirchner, president of Argentina, thyroid cancer, 2011. Put on my glasses. Are there stronger glasses? Because this is in fine print, because this is, tells you all about it. See, these are tidbits that your ministers don't know. That those who go against the satanic USA, yes, I said the satanic USA, God gave the blessings to the USA, but he didn't give the leaders to the USA. And the USA poisoned Hugo Chavez with cancer in 2011. And Olanta Humala, president of Peru, cancer 2011. Luis Inacio, I-N-A-C-I-O, Lula da Silva, President of Brazil, Cancer. Nestor Kirchner, former President of Art Argentina, Cancer. Fernando Lugo, President of Paraguay, Cancer. Evo Morales, President of Bolivia, Cancer. Dimila, D-I-L-M-A, Vanna Rousseff, R-O-S-S-E-F-F, -S -S -E Current President of Brazil, Cancer, Andrew Alexander Litvinenko, Litvinenko, former Russian officer, polonium poisoning, Yasser Arafat, brain hemorrhage, Khaled, K H A L E D M E S H A A L, the leader of Hamas. Poisonous shutdown of the brain. So you got to realize, this is the real world. There are so many cases of cancer and poisoning of leaders. 
These are the leftist opponents of the American intervention in South America. And they're all coming down with cancer. I believe that since the 1950s, the United States has been infecting people with cancer. In fact, the whole AIDS epidemic in Africa was done from vaccinations that contained the AIDS virus. And that's a fact. It wasn't from the, it wasn't the green monkey virus. It was from the vaccines. You see, if it was an AIDS virus, all the monkeys would have died out. But the monkeys are just very happy. It was a man-made virus. That's, AIDS is a man-made virus. And we'll tell you even more news, just to pique your interest here, a bare note, that the USA, the Washington Post, bare note, the wash, from the Washington Post, I'm not making this up, this will knock you right off your seat, from the Washington Post, the Washington Post released a most unusual story with the headline. Iranian news agency says the USA, listen now, hang on, is secretly run by Nazi space aliens. That's what the Washington Post said. Well, I'll just give you a hint. We'll talk about this later. Edward Snowden stated proof that an alien extraterrestrial intelligence agenda is driving U.S. domestic and international policy and has been doing so since 1945. And we'll tell you what Defense Minister Paul Hallier had to say, who cited Paul Charles Hall, a former U.S. Air Forceman who claims to have personally witnessed high-level cooperation between a race of extraterrestrials he called the tall whites and senior Pentagon officials at Nellis Air Force Base. See, we've got information. Your ministers don't have a clue. And back in 1954, 55, Eisenhower was meeting with the aliens, which aren't aliens, which are demons, posing as aliens. See, we understand the world. The ministers don't have a clue. We'll be able to debate worldwide if we ever have to, because we understand all these things. If God allows us to be kept alive so that we're not poisoned by the CIA, by our own governments. And we've told you that the Khazars are ruling the world. All the Khazar leaders told you that many times and that the Jews are not of Judah. It's not the Ashkenazis. Not at all. It's the Khazarian Jews. I told you that only 2% of the people in Israel are Jews. The rest are all Khazars. And I told you that Christ will set up a land for the Jews when he returns. But the Khazars set up their own land in 1948. They wanted their own land. They wanted their own country. They wanted their own country. See, the ministers don't know anything about anything. And they refuse to learn. I've told this one minister information on these subjects and just goes over his head. Just doesn't understand just doesn't understand. Well, welcome instead to the Obedient Church of God that gives you news that you've never heard before, gives you understanding that you've never known before, and gives you every jot and tittle of God's Bible, every jot and tittle for you to learn how to be a Netzerai. Because Jesus, put this in your bear notes, Jesus was not a Christian. That's right, Jesus was not a Christian. Paul was not a Christian. Paul was a Netsarai. The devils all got together and 
formed a committee to figure out how to get everybody thrown into hell, all the humans thrown into hell. And they devils came up with the idea, let's form a religion called Christianity that's not Christian at all. That starts out with Ishtar, the goddess of sexual love, rolling eggs on the White House lawn. Or Ishtar, the goddess of sexual love. Let's have Mother Goddess Day for your dear sweet mother. Let's have Sky Father's Day for your dear sweet father. Let's have Turkey God Day for God. Let's have Christmas Day for God. We get all the pagan days and call them Christian. Jesus was not a Christian. Paul was not a Christian. They were an exeri. And the only ones who are going to be in the box, in in the world tomorrow, on the proof of this Bible, is the Netzerai, not the Christians, because Jesus was not a Christian. So put that one in your pipe and smoke it. See, we the obedient Church of God are on the cutting edge. We know the truths. We give you the truths. And we give you the admonishment for you to repent and stop following your satanic ministers who are only half full of oil and will lead you straight into the lake of fire because anyone that's half full of oil only doing half of the things right on the authority of this Bible will be locked out where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Instead, welcome to the obedient Church of God, who's helping you to understand your Bible and understand the world. Now that we've admonished you and given you some tidbits, let us enter the throne room by a prayer, and then we will sing praises to Father and Yeshua, because this is a worship service also. So all please rise. Face the north heavens, where Yeshua and Father are. Raise your arms and worship, because you worship them. Bow your head in humility, close your eyes in sincerity. Mighty, most loving Father, thank you for setting up the obedient Church of God, because we didn't intend to set it up. It all was done one step at a time through your intervention in affairs of life. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for your knowledge that you've given the obedient Church of God of your Torah, of your Bible, of your Word. Thank you for the knowledge and understanding of the world so that we can understand that there is only one government that works and that is yours because every system in the world from the Roman Empire to Napoleon, all of them had collapsed in on themselves at one time or another. Father, look after our 200 plus brethren in Pakistan, keep them safe and alive. As eight of them were burned to death before they met us. And they've been safe now for, well, years, five, six, seven years now. Please keep them safe. Please inspire the services today, both the speaking and the hearing, and especially inspire the listening on tape, when the people listen to the video so they can understand the points and the revelations that we are giving them and the new understanding, the rediscovered understanding of the truths of your Bible and get them all to be the ten wise virgins. And let us be a witness against those who refuse to repent and let the blood be on their head. So now we turn this service over to your hands and ask it all in Yeshua HaMashiach's holy righteous name, our soon arriving king of the world, who will rule with a rod of iron. Amen. Yeah, little baby Jesus, meek and mild, first day on the job kills 200 million. Way in the manger, you're going to be hearing that on your, you know, in your shopping mar marts, in your food storage, no king crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus lays down his sweet head. Oh yeah? Comes back with a rod of iron, kills 200 million, first day on the job. Read it in Revelation. Couldn't be any clearer than that, that he's going to rule with a rod of iron. Well, now that we're in the throne room, let's give some homage to Father. 
Take your hymnals. And here's our beautiful 1934 hymnal that has the original words from the little schoolhouse of Mr. Armstrong. Camera one for camera two. But you don't have that hymnal, so you'll have to use the Worldwide Church of God hymnal. That's right. And sing page 21. Our God is good and upright, the way he'll sinners show. If you believe that, you should sing it out. We're here to show you God's way. And if you don't follow God's way, you're a sinner. If you don't do what we tell you to do in this Bible, you will be in the lake of fire on the authority of this Bible. Because you can't be half full of oil. So it's hymn number 21. Let's tell him that he's good and upright and that the meek in judgment he will guide and make his paths to know. Not the disobedient ministers who aren't meek in judgment, who are pig-headed, self-willed ministers, refuse to follow New Month Day. Refuse to follow Deuteronomy 16, 16. Three times a year you shall worship at a feast site. But you sing out. Because this is your duty. This is your offering, the fruit of your lips. Sing out. because these songs are put in specific order on themes. To thee I lift my soul. So you're going to ask, Father, show me thy ways. That's verse 2. You're going to ask him to show you his ways. You're going to ask him to teach you. You're going to ask him to lead you. You're going to ask him to be your teacher. You're even going to ask him to send you salvation. If you don't sing out, then you're not asking him to show him, show you his ways. You're not asking him to teach you. You're not asking him to lead you. And you're not asking him to be your teacher. And you're not asking for salvation. So I think you'd better 
give your head a shake and sing out and ask these things so that you can receive. Or if you ask not, you receive not. Hymn 22. Number 23, Psalm 25. Mine eyes upon the Lord continually are set.
Be seated. I hope he's staying out. Very important. Now we told you in the opening part of the service, we tell you more about this world. Well, first of all, you've got to survive this world so that you can see Yeshua arrive. Now, that's a good reason for you to want to stay alive so that you can be in the first resurrection but so that you can also see Yeshua arrive. Now we've got dynamite information about you, you know, from all sources around the world and all types of research. And I think what I should do is just hit some highlights for you so that you can understand that we've got proof and we know that of what we speak. One of the bare notes is that there were giants in the world before and they were ruling over the people. And I've been looking for one of these pictures that I had put away, that I had filed away, of one of the giants ruling the people on a cuneiform tablet. And it shows the size of the giant king, and it shows the size of the human beings. And I want to show this to you on camera, because this goes back millennium. It's an actual picture that I've been looking for for a long time to show you. Now for camera one, I'm going to hold it there for you to look at for a second so that you can see the size of that king sitting there and the size of the people. Now, going by that size, that looks like the king is like one of the giants that could have been over 30 feet high because the people are 5 feet high and the giant king is sitting down and he's twice the height of the people which, make, which will make him 20 feet sitting down. And then if he were, were to stand up, you know, that would at least add another 5 feet yeah, that's an actual cuneiform tablet that shows the size of the king ruling the people to scale because everything else is to scale. The chair is to scale, the throne is to scale, the table in front of the giant king is to scale. And the people are to scale. That's for camera one. I'll just hold it for the backup camera, camera two. Just so you can see that. Been wanting to show you that for a long time. The picture of the giant king on the cuneiform tablet. So I want you to realize that there are giants. There are Nephilim. Because the offspring of the Watchers, the Watchers were the disobedient angels, 200 of them, in the book of Enoch, that made a pact to go in and take women as wives. And indeed, this is why God had to destroy the earth in terms of all the inhabitants except Noah who was found righteous in his generations. He was the only one who wasn't polluted. His family was the, were the only ones whose genes weren't polluted. And they had to bring in all the animals because the animals had been polluted. Yeah, all the animals' genetics had been fouled up. 
we're not going to get into Pegasus and flying. We're not going to get into the animal kingdom that was polluted. But the point is that you have the Nephilim, you have the Watchers, and that picture that I showed you is the offspring of the Watchers. And it isn't a little storybook that you taught in Sunday school that, no, there was this flood and the little animals came in two by two and the big animals came in also. It isn't that kind of story. It's a very complex story that the DNA of all of the people of the earth had been contaminated and of the animals. So therefore it had to, they had to be drowned. It wasn't because God was a meanie that he drowned all the animals. It's that they, all the other animals were polluted. So he had to take two of each kind that weren't polluted. And some animals he took more than two of a kind. Anyways, the point being, Noah's Ark is not a fairy tale child story. It's a highly sophisticated scientific journal of what had to be done because the DNA was corrupted on the earth and only Noah and his family had a pure genome. So there you've got the picture of the giants and the giants did come back again because remember in Canaan's land the giants had to be slaughtered Now where we're at here is in teaching you things that you've never known before. Now we were talking about Planet X7. And planet X7 is called X7 because it's seven times larger in diameter. Seven times larger than the Earth itself. That's why it's called Planet 7X. Now there have been new findings and there's strong evidence indicating that its appearance is going to be soon. Planet 7X is real and it's biblical and it's going to reappear as it continues its circuits around the this galaxy. You know, Joshua's long day. Remember Joshua's long day? And how the illustration in the Bible shows the day was extended by 12 hours in Joshua's long day. Well, planet 7X passed between the Earth and the Moon. And here's the answer, bear notes, explaining Joshua's extended 36-hour day, extended by 12 hours. Here it is. Write this down. Planet 7X passed between the Earth and the Moon, comma, the electromagnetic plasma field gradually interfered with the electromagnetic energy flowing from the Sun to the Earth's poles. Period. The Earth's magnetosphere protected them in part from the plasma's harmful effects, comma, but the electromagnetic energy field of the Earth needs to rotate on its axis will gradually diminish and then stops. And here's the key. 
the rotation will not restart until it travels past the plasma field of planet 7x again. Say that again. The rotation of the Earth will not restart until it travels past the plasma field of planet 7x. So as the planet goes by between the Sun and the Moon and the Earth, it, planet X, interferes with the electromagnetic energy flowing from the Sun to the Earth's poles. And the Earth's magnetosphere is protected in part from the plasma's harmful effects, but the electromagnetic energy field of the Earth needs to rotate on its axis, that it needs to rotate, that it needs to rotate on its axis gradually diminishes and stops. So the rotation stops. And it, here's the key, it will not restart until planet X7, 7X, travels past the plasma field. Now the Bible example tells of a 20, 12 hour regular day with 12 hour extended daylight. Now that's a total of uh, 24 hours of daylight plus the night, which is 36. And that was accomplished from the deceleration and accelerating back to the normal rate of rotation. Now in the notes here it says, an illustration of Joshua's long day, shown in a more modern setting, depicts the visual effects and the perspective that Joshua and his 30 to 40,000 troops witnessed that day. Using the 50 to 1 ratio of the visual effect of planet 7x, traveling at a distance from the Earth of 70% of the distance between the Moon and the Earth. This is also what the Bible alludes to in the book of Revelation and Luke in the latter days of Abaddon the Destroyer. We're not going to get into that, but here's the point. A physics pr professor stated that this is the first time that anyone has been able to give a logical explanation on how the Earth can physically slow down for 12 hours, as stated in the book of Joshua. Now there's a bear note for you. And guess what? There's also scientific calculations that show that the day was 36 hours. I've got that somewhere in my boxes of notes somewhere. And I think Darren Clark had that information. If you have wanted that information, because I will never find it in my boxes of notes at this time, you would contact Darren Clark and ask him for the information on the calculations for how the Earth time was changed and is borne out by physics, that there was a day that was 12 hours longer. And I think Velikovsky, Emmanuel Velikovsky, also had information on that. There was this book called Worlds in Collision, and Velikovsky had written on this, and regarding, you know, tilt adjustments, with the meteor showers and tidal waves and tides, land tides associating with Planet X flying by nearby, Planet 7X. There's also with King Hezekiah showing how the shadow moved 10 steps for King Hezekiah with Planet X. Now we could e easily extrapolate on that also when Yeshua was on the cross on the stake that it was three hours of darkness. Well that could be accounted for by planet 7x 
passing between the Earth and the Sun. And I could prove out three hours of darkness as a biblical eyewitness. It's important for you to know these things. His father is a great scientist. Now there are even ancient manuscripts from Chinese astronomers and Hebrew sources from the Torah and the accounts of Joshua and the Bible. And we can see these things. Therefore, a model can be created from the documented eyewitnesses. Evidence does exist of such a planet. Now that planet is going to be coming back again in the very near future. The reason I'm telling you this is because I want to establish that there is a planet 7X and it has affected events on the earth before such as in Joshua's time, such as in the day that had three hours of darkness on Yeshua's crucifixion. Now if you go into Revelation, I was doing a minor study on this at one time, and I recall, recall in Revelation 12, here comes a bear note for you, that you're going to want to use your pen in Revelation 12 and put in a better translation. Revelation 12, verse 1. And verse 3. But it says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Now I'm thinking about this as I'm telling you this, and I don't have enough time to tell you about this without laying down a foundation. And that's one of the things that happens on radio broadcasts, you know, or on talk shows, and you try to debate someone, and you only get like three minutes to tell them about it, and if you don't lay down the foundation, and they're continually interrupting you, so you never get to lay down the foundation. The point is, there's going to be a great sign appearing in the heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And we've got to lay down a foundation about that. Because there's going to be another sign in heaven. A great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Seven diadems on his heads and his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. We will have to take a whole broadcast to put this in context because there's so much going on here. What I can say is a great fiery red dragon can be translated as illuminate, illuminated and brilliance, brilliance. So it isn't, you know, like you have the uh, comic book, uh, Satan as a, you know, red devil with a tail and a pitchfork. This should say, another sign appeared in heaven, behold, great luminance, great brightness, great brilliance, not fiery. Because if it was fiery, then people on the earth would say, wait a minute, wait a minute, that looks a little satanic, satanic to me. This is the bear note. Bear note, if it was great fiery red, it should say illuminated, brightness, not fiery. Because the people on the earth wouldn't believe 
that it is a good thing if it is fiery. So instead, if it was illuminated and brightness, it would look like Christ is coming back. And that's how the deception is going to be. Like I said, this for me to go into this, I'd have to lay the foundation and go through this for a whole broadcast. But I wanted to bring this out about planet uh, X, 7x, seven times the Earth's diameter, and that it should be coming around, and it should be throwing a wrench into things, a monkey wrench into, into the gear works. The same way that it did in the days of Hezekiah. The days of Hezekiah. Well, that's another thing. That's when the Earth tilted. In my notes I've got here, since I said it, the earth tilted, King Hezekiah, and that shows the illustration how the shadow moved ten steps for King Hezekiah when planets 7x passed between the earth and the moon before. And the earth's north pole had a magnetic attraction to planet 7x as it passed near the earth effectively causing a tilt of 27 to 28 degrees. Look, we've got the real science that your ministers don't even have a clue about. So in the time of Hezekiah, how the shadow moved 10 steps for King Hezekiah, another bear note titled, How the Shadow Moved 10 Steps for King Hezekiah. So planet 7x passed between the Earth and the Moon at that time, and the Earth's North Pole had a magnetic attraction to planet 7x as it passed near the Earth, effectively causing a tilt of 26 to 28 degrees. There are other things I could tell you. If you have any qualms or doubts, just realize that God can do anything that He wants at any time that He wants. And we'll just leave it there because it's not something I want to argue with about with you. There are so many other things to tell you about. Remember I've told you that the United States will be taken captive. The United States will be taken captive. That you will go into slavery. I want to show you a picture of what's happening right now in China how people are living, how some people have to live in cages. And that cage costs them like $1,100 in their Chinese money a month in rent to live in a cage with cages stacked upon cages. I'm going to show you an actual picture of an actual cave. This is how some people in China live. You see that? Let's draw it back here. The man, that's, where, that's his home. That's his whole house, what you see on the picture. It's a cage. It's a cage. It's a cage. That's how you're going to live when you're in slavery. That's how the slaves are living the lowest classes in China. Well, the lowest classes are out on the street. But the slave class in China, that's how they're living, in cages. That's all they can afford. A cage. A cage. You will be living in a cage. Unless you repent and go into the place of safety, you're going to end up in a cage in China. And indeed, there are all these ghost cities in China. Cities that are totally empty. And it's not like seven apartment blocks that are totally empty. It's seven cities. Bear note, seven whole cities that are totally brand new, built, and are totally empty. Seven whole cities. Not seven apartments, blocks. Seven whole cities, empty. That's for you to work as a slave in China. You heard it first here on the Obedient Church of God. It's trying to prepare you for the end times and what you're going to have to deal with. Now, we don't want these things to happen to you. That's why we're admonishing you to repent and follow every jot of God's Bible. 
But some of you just don't get it, and you think that you can follow your lying devil ministers, and your ministers are devils, because they say they believe in God, and they say they follow every word of this Bible, but they don't follow the test commandment, which is, remember the seventh day to keep it holy, they move it to Friday. Every worldwide Church of God offshoot including the Jews, all of them move God's Sabbath day to Friday. That's a fact. That's a fact. And yet, they want you to follow them and support them while they break the test commandments of Ezekiel 20.20, 20, which clearly states in Ezekiel 20.20, 20, that the Sabbath is, and in Ezekiel 20, 12, that you cannot move the day. You cannot move the day. But your ministers move the day. See, we the obedient Church of God are the Romans 9, 28 work. We didn't want to be. But nobody else is preaching what we're preaching. Nobody else is telling you to repent and believe this book every jot and tittle. Your ministers are typing away articles saying don't obey the new month day, making excuses about Purim when Yeshua did not attend Purim. He walked on the colonnades, in the colonnades. It doesn't say he went into the service. It doesn't say that he preached. It doesn't say that he stood up like he did not on the great last day when he stood up doesn't say that. It says he walked in the colonnades the same way as if I go down to the beach and I walk in the columns of the boardwalk. doesn't mean I went in the water. doesn't mean I went in the temple. It means I walked in the colonnades. So get that straight. Yeshua didn't do one thing against his law. Anyways, the point is, your ministers are lying devils, proven by the fact that they move God's Sabbath day to Friday in half of the world. Now, what are we going to tell you about next? You're going to be approached by the police at some time in your life and they're going to start asking you questions. What you will want to say to them is, here's my name, here's my address, and I don't answer questions. And I want a lawyer. I'm going to give you some magic words. Bear no magic words. I'm going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. See, if you talk to the police, when your case comes up in court, the police can misquote, one, they can misquote what you said, or two, they can lie altogether about what you said. Now, if you only say the magic words, I'm going to remain silent, then in court, they can't misquote you. And they can't lie about what you said because you didn't say anything. You remained silent. And it happens all the time that the police lie and the police misquote what you said. So you're going to say the magic words. I'm going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. Now here are some of the tricks the police will use. They'll say, you're not a suspect. Just help us understand what happened here, and then you can go. To which you say, I am going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. Then the police will say, if you don't answer my questions, I'll have no choice but to arrest you. Do you want to go to jail? 
You don't have to answer them. You say, I am going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. Then they'll say, if you don't answer my questions, I'm going to charge you with resisting arrest. Look, he can't charge you with anything. It's the prosecuting attorney, the DA, the district attorney, that does the charges. So again, when he says, if you don't answer my questions, I'm going to charge you with resisting arrest, you say, I'm going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. His next trick would be, all your friends have cooperated and we let them go home. You're the only one left. Your answer is, I'm going to remain silent. I want to re see a lawyer. You see, the police are more experienced than you are. They do this all day long. They're sneaky, and they're getting sneakier, and they trick you. They trick you into talking. And as soon as you talk, then they can misquote you. Then they can misquote you. And indeed, they could lie of what you said. And then there's the good cop, bad cop scam also. Yeah, there's a good cop, bad cop scam. And they'll have the bad cop as being aggressive. Yes. And menacing. While the good cop is nice, friendly, and familiar, and he's probably the same race and gender as you, and the idea is the bad cop is to scare you, and the good cop is to give you the appearance that if you talk to him, everything will be all right. So you're desperately looking for a friend, and the good cop tries to be as your friend. But the problem is, that good cop will misquote what you said. So insist on speaking with a lawyer before you answer any questions, and indeed, or sign anything. Never, ever speak. Never, ever speak. You don't have to speak. So that will keep you out of trouble. I wanted to point that out because there are going to come times when you are going to be hauled in for saying something against homosexuals. And that will be called hate speech. And if they ask you what you said, don't start quoting the Bible and what the Bible says because there's new rulings that as soon as you start talking to them, as soon as you start talking to them, that nullifies all your rights. So even if you want to quote the Bible about homosexuality being a sin and a perversion, don't. You would say, I'm going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. But they'll say, but, but you've been accused of hate speech. Or you're supporting a church that has hate speech. I'll let you go if, if you just tell me what happened. You say, I'm going to remain silent and I want to see a lawyer. Okay. So therefore, we are trying to help keep you out of jail, keep you out of trouble. And we want the best for you. But remember, the police misquote you, and the judge is going to believe the policeman, not you. If there's a discrepancy in what you said and what the policeman says you said, the judge is going to believe the policeman. He's not going to believe you. So get it straight. Get it straight. I'm going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. Okay. I hope that helps you, because we're preparing you for the end times. And the end times are coming in the next three years, and it's serious. 
it's so serious that your life, your very life is at stake. Now we've got more information here on the darkest days that are coming up here. Darkest days that are on their way. We want to give you just a few little tips on having a bug out bag. That isn't so difficult. You know, if you have to leave a, leave a city for three days or an extended period of time, you've got to have a bag of stuff. Okay? You should have some essentials to last you the length of your trip. Remember, if an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, hits the country, there won't be any water because the water won't be pumping. There won't be any lights. There won't be anything. So, I want to give you some basic information that you should have packed at least two sets of extra clothes in case your clothing gets wet. You're wearing one set of clothes, so that makes three sets two in the bags, in the bag that you've got. Two, choose clothing that is quick drying. Three, take enough water with you for 72 hours. It can also, depending on the situation, have a lightweight tiny tent or at least a poncho, a waterproof rain poncho with you. And a lightweight sleeping bag. Even a sleeping pad if you've got the room for it. Because you might have to vacate your apartment for a number of days. Let them ransack your apartment, let the mobs ransack your apartment, and then you come back a week later, but you're going to have to survive. So we figured it out so far that you're going to have to leave because you won't be safe where you are if you're in a city, a big city. You have to leave and then come back if you don't have a place. So you'll want a small emergency battery powered radio with a hand crank that doesn't take up much room and keep you informed if in fact any of the radio stations are working. And there will be some type of emergency broadcasting system. And you should have a two-way radio. You can buy two-way radios, a set of two for $20. And you should have pack your important papers so that if you want to come back, you can identify yourself. And you should bring a weapon of some type to protect yourself, a knife or a gun. And you're going to have to be wise enough to maybe have pepper spray for your personal protection or for protection against even unfriendly dogs that are out ravaging for food. You know, I know it sounds odd, but we know that the darkest days are coming. And I want you to be aware that you should have at least a bag so that you could leave and go somewhere for three days. Or even go to a friend's place or group together with a group of friends outside of town somewhere. The idea is the darkest days are coming. And if you don't prepare, if you don't prepare, you don't have a chance. You don't have a chance. And don't forget, if you're going to be outside, you're going to want to take primitive fire starting methods, some type of flint, some way to start a small fire campfire so that you can have warmth and I've slept on the ground 
at night outside in the woods camping without a tent. And if you have a small fire, it's just enough to keep you warm and you'll roll over and change sides facing the fire to keep warm. But that's better than being murdered inside your apartment inside of a big city by marauding mobs. So you wait until the mobs die down and then you can possibly go back. Or you can move on to another safer place if you can find a place to gather together and we can tell you all about gathering together. Now this segues into what I mentioned at the beginning in the broadcast that in Russia now you can carry guns for self-defense. It's amazing. Russia is freer than America. <laughs> it's amazing. Now, in an amendment, reading from an article here, in an amendment, the Russian government has eased restrictions allowing citizens to carry guns for self-defense. Before, it was only for hunting or target shooting after obtaining a license through the Inter Interior Ministry. Well, now you can have applicants that can have handguns for you to carry li literally on the street. So the government, Russian government's press service underscored that carrying a weapon is allowed. And it includes self-defense weapons, small bore, long-barreled guns, pistols, revolvers, tasers, and devices equipped with tear gas. Interesting. So you can carry smooth bore, long-barreled guns, pistols, revolvers, other firearms, as well as tasers and devices equipped with tear gas. In addition, the amendment softened requirements for foreigners bringing arms into the Russian Federation or purchasing arms on Russian territory. It's amazing. So I wanted to tell you about this. Because the Russians know something's up with the world and there will be breakdown. And the Russian people are helping their people. The Russian people are helping their own people prepare. The United States government is just doing the opposite, trying to disarm you. I hope that helps you. Because you've got to prepare. Get your bug out bag. Get your bug out bag. So that at least you can make a three-day trip and have water, chocolate bars, some type of beef jerky. Because we are dealing, we're literally dealing with the devil here in America. Because we've got leaders that are satanic, satanic Illuminati. Now remember I told you that Chavez even said, President Chavez even said he could smell sulfur left behind by the devil, George Bush, who had addressed the chamber 24 hours earlier. So Chavez attacked the devil, Bush, in a UN speech, in a 15-minute speech to the annual gathering of international leaders in New York. So. President Chavez knows what's going on. Remember I said the USA has been dealing with aliens, demons, since the 1948, definitely since 54 when Eisenhower met with demons. And I've told you before that the United States lost the war of Ant Antarctica, was beaten, beaten and lost some ships in the war of Antarctica in 1948. You can Google that. I'm not going to take the time to go into that. But this is...
to wake you up that your leaders, that we're living in a satanic country. We're not living in a Christian nation. Christians are not followers of Christ. They're followers of Turkey God Day, of Baal's Day, the shortest day of the year, and of the longest day of the year, Sky Father's Day, and of Mother Goddess Day, Turkey God Day. And we're in a satanic nation, but nobody realizes it. Yes, God gave the blessings of the land to Judah, to Judah, to Israel, to Jacob, I'm trying to say to Jacob, to Ephraim, to Manasseh. But he didn't give the leader. The leader is Satan. The leader is Satan the devil. So Chavez had it right, saying he could still smell the sulfur left behind by the devil, George Bush. Now, one of the other things to prepare you for, since we're on the topic, I've got a map here. This shows the New World Order zones. And if you write this down as a bear note, the simulated re reserve and corridor system to protect, protect biodiversity. A simulated reserve and corridor system to protect biodiversity. And this is mandated by the New World Order. Now I'm going to show you this map. It's in red, blue, and yellow. You'll notice that we, the Obedient Church of God, are in a blue area. The, the blue area is normal use zones of cooperation. The red area is reserved for little or no human use. The yellow is regulated human use. Now let me show you the no human use. So you know that of which I speak. You look up at the top at Washington and you will see, like in OMAC, Washington, no human use in the red zone. Now you look over to the east coast and you'll see all the blue, such as in Tennessee, where there's free use. But you look at the rest of the country and it's all, all, all red, no use, or yellow, limited use, with just some pockets here and there. So the place to gather together might be Tennessee before we leave for the place of safety, which we believe is Petra. Why did you to see that map? Now I'll hold it up for camera two also, our backup camera system. That's important for you to understand, that we know that of which we talk, that, that of which we speak. So to make it clearer, I change the printer. Here's the same map, but again, the blue is the east in Tennessee. All the rest you'll be transported out of. You'll be rounded up by the Gestapo with guns. They'll herd you off into rail cars with shackles on them and move you out. Unless you're in Tennessee. I'll show you another coloration of the blue, where the blue stands out more. That is the allowed area. That is the allowed area, and God's led us here. So we're way ahead of the curve. Way ahead of the curve. Because we are trying to repatriate all the Christians and to get all the Christians to gather ye together before the day, terrible day. And that's important. Because the Bible does state, gather ye, 
gather ye together. This is before the place of safety. This is before the place of safety. So let's type it in, in conclusion here, because we're running out of time again. Let's see if we can pull it up. Gather ye, gather ye together. Let's back it up and put some spaces in here. And it's before the terrible day. Okay. So there's all kinds of them gather you together. Psalm 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Okay? That's very important. We've got to have a gathering place. Gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and our sacrifice is the fruit of our lips. And we've made a covenant with God that we will obey him, every jot and tittle. And the Bible is saying, gather ye together. Even in Joel 3.11, talking about gathering together. Go all the way back. We, the Obedient Church of God, are trying to save you physically so that you can see Yeshua arrive and repent, and spiritually from the 40 years in the spiritual wilderness. So take heart that only the Obedient Church of God is providing the way because your other ministers are having you disobey God. i have having you disobey God. Disobey Ezekiel 46.3, New Month Day to worship God. Disobey Deuteronomy 16.16, 16, three times a year. You're supposed to have a feast. Having you disobey the feasts, the fasts of the Lord. Having you sell, having you, know, you have this Sabbath day on Friday in half the world. Having you celebrate Turkey God Day, Mother Goddess Day, Sky Father's Day. They're only half full of oil. We're here to help you. Go to our site, theworldtomorrow.org, and see the facts. They're all enumerated there. And that's the broadcast for today, as we try to save you both spiritually and physically. So take your hymnals now, in closing, We're going to have a song to the Lord. Turn now from evil, do what is good. That's how God's eyes are on you, on the righteous man, on the man that does good. Turn thou from evil, do what is good. Upon the just are the eyes of God, and his ears are open to their cry. But the eternal's face is against them that are evil, doers of wrong. So don't be a doer of wrong. Don't be part of a church that moves God's Sabbath to Friday with a phony international deadline. Turn thou from evil.
righteous men cry, God always hears. For He delivered them from fears. Near unto them of a broken heart, contrite the Spirit that saveth them. standing for the closing prayer. Arms raised in worship, head bowed in humility, eyes closed in sincerity. Almighty powerful Father El Shaddai, thank you for the service today, explaining how Joshua's day was an extra 12 hours of daylight. Thank you for the understanding of how to prepare physically Thank you for the understanding of how to prepare spiritually. Thank you for leading the obedient Church of God into all knowledge of truth, both spiritual and physical. Thank you for the protection you've given us over the last week, and please keep us safe this coming week from the state troopers, from the highway patrol, from the county sheriff's office, from the government inspectors, from all of the machinations of Satan in this Satan's world. So look after your little flock, protect us and guide us and lead us into more truth and understanding this week as we study your word and draw closer to you. So now we humbly ask for your dismissal and ask it all in Yeshua HaMashiach's holy righteous name, our soon arriving King of the Earth. Amen. Yes indeed, we wait and hope and look on God. And we count on him to defend us. So, righteous judge from foes defend us, and that's the broadcast for today.